All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Royal We live on a Monday night. I'm so happy that you are here with uh, me tonight. It's Monday night, and I got started about uh, 10 minutes late tonight. I do apologize for that, but we are here, and we are ready to get started. Hopefully, uh, everything is uh, coming in loud and clear. Hopefully, you can hear me. Hopefully, you can hear me now even better. I had to adjust the microphone. Uh, welcome to the Royal We Live, everybody. This is Monday night. This is the night where we come together as a community of, for the Royal We. We talk about issues pertaining to narcissism and uh, narcissistic abuse. I'm going to lower the camera just a little bit. And I'm so happy that uh, you all are here right now with me. Let's see if we can get some people in the chat room. There's Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Thank you so much for calling earlier. I uh, appreciated our our. Uh, opportunity to talk with one another and, and to catch up. We live in some uh, definitely some crazy times. Hey, Brian Torrance, how are you doing? It's good to see you here. D, third to like in the house. And 5-5, uh, five, five, Kevin. What does 5-5 five, five mean? Yay, I got the live notification tonight. Good, Cindy. I'm glad to hear that. Carl Taft. It's good to see you. Denny May. Hello, Shadow Dancer. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's good to see you all here. Uh, very happy. Very happy you're here. All right. Listen up, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started right now. I'm going to turn the music down. You're welcome to call in tonight to chat about whatever's going on. Going on in your life uh, pertaining to narcissistic abuse. I'm going to share a couple of things with you that uh, I currently have been uh, working on. One, I'm, I've been reading a book. And uh, I, I think reading books are, are good and educational. I'm going to give you my... Uh, midway point review of this book right here. This is called, uh, uh, and I I don't exactly remember why I picked this book. I I do remember why I picked this book up. I, I picked it up because I wanted to identify if codependency is an issue. Now, I've, I know that you've heard me talk about codependency in the past, and the Royal We uh, stance on codependency is that uh, I don't believe in codependency. I don't believe codependency is an issue we deal with. I think that what we deal with is misguided empathy. Okay. Now, this book right here uh, that I have is called, if you can see, it's called Codependency, or I'm sorry, Codependent No More. And it's a book by Melody uh, Beatty. And it is it was apparently a pretty popular book dealing with codependency. And it's it's pretty old. The book uh, itself is a, uh, uh, gosh, when, when was this written? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. does it does it tell me? Let me see. You can tell how often I read books. I don't even know where to find the date when the book was was published. Uh, it doesn't. Say, oh, okay, 1992. All right. So uh, 1992 is when this book was published. So it's pretty old. And I'm midway through the book. I'm doing speed reading, I'm trying to to get a, a lot more books in under my belt when it comes to dealing with narcissism, when it comes to understanding our healing. So I want to give you a little bit of a report on what I have so far out of this book. Now, so far, what I've got out of this is, is an excellent, excellent, excellent book on helping to understand the importance of detachment, okay? Uh, whether you are with an abusive person or with anybody, for that matter, the book is big on detaching, not allowing another person's issues or the way they choose to live their life be your responsibility. This is actually great insight for you and for me. Uh, this book is big on getting to the point of that allowing other people to live the way they want to live their life and to think the way they want to think in life, so long as it does not interfere with your way of living your life. And this is important for us to understand when we deal with narcissists, okay? We need to get to this place where we are okay with narcissists living the life they want to live. They want to do the things they want to do. They're going to call people names. They want to be bullies let them go. Detach in such a way that they can live how they want to live so long as it does not interfere with the way you want to live your life. I had a excellent phone conversation about this actually with Tanya earlier uh, today in that uh, what, what I was sharing with her is that we need to have this uh, uh, ability in us to give them permission. Go do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Whatever. Right? But once it starts to creep in on your life and something that belongs to you, something that is personal to you, something that 
that you need to protect and stand up for, then you stand up and go, "Uh uh-uh, no, right? One of the things that we suffer in dealing with narcissists is we don't know where that line starts and stops, okay? We think that them calling us names, for example, is something that we need to uh, step in and get in their face. And uh, No, no, no. That just makes us like them. That becomes a chest bumping match, okay? That's not what we're talking about. That's an area where you learn to let them be and think whatever they want to think. It's their life. Let them let them call you names and let them deal with the consequences of living their life of how they affected your relationship, okay? But now, if they're coming in and they're trying to force their way into your home, now you knock the sucker out, right? And I'm not trying to be violent. I'm just saying you stand up to get out of here. You call the cops. They're showing up at 3 a.m., 12 o'clock in the morning. You call the police on them. They're showing up in your office. You have them escorted out. This is where they're now encroaching. They're, they're, they're squatting in your territory, right? One of the things that we have to understand about narcissistic abuse is if you think about it, most narcissistic abuse takes place in their territory, right? The abuse that I dealt with uh, took place because I kept going to them and it took me a long time to figure this out. I, I was going to them because they were inviting me, right? We want you to come. Come over. They, they put you in this bad spot where if you don't participate with them, you're a bad person. But when you do participate with them, it's so that you can be their punching bag. So it takes a long time. And then when you stop, when you when you disengage, you stop coming around, they say that you are a troublemaker. So they, they leave you no way out. They, they've got you trapped and cornered. It takes a lot of strength to say, no, I'm done. I'm not going to your territory. It's kind of like bullies telling you you have to play in the sandbox that they're in right? That they own so they can bully you. It takes strength and time uh, for you to realize you don't even have to be in that sandbox, okay? And you leave. And now the whole game changes once you leave because now those bullies try to go to your sandbox. You just throw sand in their eyes. Say, get out of here, right? You're not welcome. And they have no choice but to leave, right? I found that power in the narcissistically abusive relationship that I dealt with. For many of you that you you understand this, I, I dealt with in-laws, right? Siblings of, half-siblings of, of my wife. And when I was going into their family's home and they were mistreating me and I was trying to solve the problem, I was trying to fix it, I was trying to stand up for myself and I kept looking like a bad person, a bad person, a bad, I was the bad guy. I was gaslit. All I was trying to do was get along with people and I was the bad guy. I was the punching bag. Why? The reason is because I kept going to their territory. Okay, I was in their world trying to change the way they do things. I had to step back, and yes, they griped and complained. Oh, Kevin doesn't come around. Oh, he's he's he doesn't let uh, us see our family anymore. Oh, they made a big old hellish hoopla over it. But I gained my power when I left, and now they don't even come around because now they know I don't tolerate that stuff. They can no longer bring that stuff to because now if they bring it to me, the name calling and this now I'll tell them to leave. I'll say, leave. And by the way, you're not aunts and you're not uncles to my kids. Who do you think you are? Don't come over to my house. I could pretend, I can act like I don't even know them and I'm fine with that because I don't. They're not a part of my lives. My, my kids don't have aunts and uncles uh, uh, that, that go by their names. That is what their reward is for treating me the way and treating my family the way they did. They disrespected us in their place. And so they get to deal with the consequences of that division, that division in the family. And they could blame me for leaving. I, I, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, but what this book does is, is help you to understand that that detachment is good. And it's, it's neither selfish to do that, nor is it selfless. And this is what we have to be okay with. It's not selfish to detach and to leave an unhealthy situation. This book, she indicates, as, as a codependent, you have to learn to be able to, to detach, like, like how I did, leave, separate the families. This isn't good. It isn't healthy. I'm not bringing my kids around to see you uh, call us names and this and that. You're not going to be aunts and uncles if you're going to do this stuff, okay? That detachment. Now, what the point this makes is that we have to be okay with understanding that it's not selfish to do that, 100%, but it's also not selfless. And we have to be okay with that. Meaning it's not, it's not us only thinking of ourselves. 
okay? Because in, in my situation, leaving in-laws, I wasn't just thinking of myself, okay? I was thinking of my kids too. I don't want my kids around their name calling and cussing because I don't want them to live a life thinking that's okay. And maybe for their family, that's okay. They come from a background of cussing, calling people names and fighting for a uh, position in their family. And that's fine. I'm not going to judge them for how they want to live their life. But I decide how me and my kids are going to live our lives. And I say, no, we're not going to be around that. So is it selfish? No. No, it's not selfish because I'm thinking about my family as well and the way in which we want to want to lead. Uh, but now is it completely selfless? Well, no, because I'm not taking into consideration their need for cussing and name calling and fighting. I'm, I'm sure in their world, they have a need for that. I'm sure in a narcissistic world, they have an implanted need to to try to beat other people and feel better about themselves and this and that. And so they have to do it. And so I'm so I'm not selfless in the way that I'm taking that into consideration. I'm making a hard no. It's unhealthy. Boom. I, I don't care to know anything else. Okay. So I'm going to get some of your questions. So that's what I like about this book. All right. Codependency no more. What I don't like about this book, I'm going to get into some of the negatives now, is there, this was, by the way, this was written in 1992. This was before um, narcissistic abuse, the, the terminology narcissistic abuse gained popularity uh, to the likes of it, what it, which it is right now. And it seems to me that what the... Um, what the author is doing is actually putting a lot of narcissistic characteristics and calling it codependent. And it really threw me off. And I got a phone call. And I'm going to go ahead and take the phone call because that takes priority. We'll take the phone call because that takes priority. And then we'll get back into the book. You're live on the Royal We. You're live on the Royal We. Hello? Hello? I don't know what's going on. Maybe they'll call. Okay, we lost that phone call. It looks like it was out of the country. Uh, apologize for that. You're live on the Royal We. I think I might have an issue here. There you are. Hello. You're live on the Royal We. Uh, this is, uh, as the old saying goes, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Antonio? How are you? Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, I guess I'm, had a little uh, technical hello, difficulty. Oh, uh, that's all right. It's, uh, we are fallible beings, and we're also dealing with... Uh, uh, other things uh, that we have to try to work through. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, uh, we yes. got it. We got the connect now. Yes. 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 Uh, how are you? How, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. What's going on? I'm taking some notes of some questions that people have in here that I want to answer as well. Uh, narcissist oh, okay. using I... territorial spirit with territory. Okay, we'll get some of those. Well, what's going on, Antonio? Um. Okay, I'll try to be uh, as uh, summarized as possible. Uh, it's interesting that you uh, were citing the idea of. Uh, the book you're referencing and just the idea of uh codependency having to let go having to let go and let them onto their own yes yes absolutely that's yes. that's one of the biggest um, points of this of this book that I've that I've gotten a, a big positive point of the book by the way and and then and, and, and uh my situation I've referenced that's obviously what it boiled down to what it led to I had to let right. go and right right however uh more recently, uh, I think I've passingly referenced this before, would pertain to a sibling who I have reason to have their evidence be that there is a development of that same sort of traits within her. And now it seems to be coming to a head and I may have to do the same with a sibling, which I, again, okay. I, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 a, their, their actions and their decisions are just in dire, uh, uh, odds with each other that right. is bringing the same kind of thing there, and societally speaking, in a uh, the, the in a more societal narcissistic, you know, under the uh, circumstances we're in, uh, 
it led to a, a separation between myself and another sibling. I have two siblings. I'm the oldest of two. Okay. Where, no, it's not him that has those traits but because of the mandates being put upon. I was living there for a while. And again, we're, we're amicable on the, the idea that, well, he has decided to adhere. I am not. So I have no right to live there. So I had to move on. Yet it is bringing a wedge or a division there in terms of, well, we don't, we're, 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 that's a very big diametrically opposition in, 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 in mindset, if you will. So it's okay. really that's been weighing on me. So those are the, in, in summary, there you go. That's what I'm kind of dealing with. And it's, I got gotcha. you. Really starting to kind of wake. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to just, uh, uh, kind of, uh, it was uh, just, and just knowing that I got to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to press forward. It's just, you know, the, uh, it's the, the idea of, okay, now if it wasn't just a romantic relationship, now it's okay. Dealing with the societal aspect of the, sure. uh, infringements that are now, interfering and disrupting and then uh, uh familial so it's just a it's, right i'm kind of tired of living the cycle right now i know, <laughs> you know i hear you like uh i hear you yeah time time is a flat circle to me and it's like it yeah. seems to just keep cycling i'm trying to uh, something that you referenced the idea of uh, either we're going to downward spiral or we're going to spiral upwards and i really want to keep striving to spiral upwards and continuing that's forward right and not that's right down so and there's that right that's that's right. That's right. That's that's the way to that's yeah. the way to approach that. That's how you want to be. You want to spiral upwards, not not backwards, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. And I'm trying. I'm trying. It's just, uh, it's yeah. just life. I'm learning again. Well, I'm not learning. This is a given. It's just uh, it's becoming much more prevalent. I guess you would say in the last few years that uh, the trials, tribulations, the we're gonna get into this. We're <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna get into this. I I've got a very, no. You're Antonio. Uh, you are subscribed to the the organic channel, right? Uh, well, the, I mean, the I regular have Royal Wee channel page. I don't have a YouTube page that I keep up by right, just okay. searching up and seeing what's going new and stuff like that. We're going to talk more about this, exactly what you're talking about. Not on this no, episode, no, but no, I, no. but I have a video that's going to be coming out. We're going to be talking about, no, 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 no. yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about why, uh, more and more this is being noticed right in, in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's so upsetting. It's so disappointing, but it's not mm -hmm. what you think. It's not what you think. Okay. There's a twist to it. And, uh, okay. and we'll be talking about that, okay? I promise you. But hang in there, hang in there, and know I'm that in. you're I'm not in. you're not alone in noticing uh, the the world shift, okay? But it's not what you think. Okay. It's not what you think. All right. It's not doom and gloom. Right. Uh, it seems like it, mm -hmm. but it's not. All right. Well, I look forward to that, and it's right. interesting. Again, the divine uh, appointment or divine. Uh, inspiration that you're going to be doing a video on this and you kind of yeah. referenced it with the book and everything. So what I'm going through again, I'm grateful to you and the Royal We family. And I let you back into the rest of the show and I right. appreciate your time. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks for calling. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Antonio, for calling. I appreciate that. And, um, so let's go ahead and, and answer some of the some of the questions on here. And, and yes, by the way, I'm going to be tackling this issue. I know that a lot of people are wondering, you know th this world. It seems so narcissistic. It seems like there's it's so crazy out there right now. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a video, but it's it's not what you think, okay? It's not that I'm going to give you a hint of what I'm going to be talking about, but I don't want to give the whole video away because I do not want to spoil the the point of the video right now because this is a special one. All right, it's a special video I'm planning for you guys here. Um, it's a deep one, and it, hopefully it's going to fill you with some encouragement, also with a little bit of uh, with uh, with an open eye. We could take a we'll take a phone call here. You're live on the Royal We. Oh, hello. Hi, you're live. Hi. Hi, how are you? Um, good. I'm trying to listen to the YouTube video, and you're not answering me on the video. So. <laughs> oh, I'm not answering you on the video. No. Um, are you, Are you on the live video? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, what's going on? Well, I'm calling in. Oh. Now you're telling me that you're taking a call. So let me see if it's me. I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah. Okay. There was a delay. Sorry. So um, I'm glad that you're talking about codependency because mm -hmm. I've been going through um, no contact with my sister for almost three months now. And mm -hmm. 
thanks to the Facebook page, I've been getting a lot of support through the Royal We um, Facebook page. And Great group so of people. Just, uh, Thank you yeah. so much. i got to give a shout out to Blue and to Tanya and to Dee and yep. to Nora. I don't know if they're listening, but they, the whole uh, Facebook page and everything that's going on in that group is so... Uh, it's so fantastic. It's amazing. And so that's, yeah. it's good to, to hear you uh, are a part of that. Well, and, you know, in addition to that, I have a friend who was also dealing with going no contact with her family. Mm-hmm. And she ended up starting attending CODA meetings during this last couple of months. And she invited me to join her. And the first week I attended, I didn't really know the tenants that the, you know, codependents claim, and they didn't read them that night. And then the second and third nights, they read them, and I've just been having this kind of gut reaction of, this sounds more like the narcissist in my life. Not right, and not that I yes. don't have any yes. tendencies that right. might be enabling people to treat me badly, but I I do stand up for myself, and I have always called you know, people on their crap when I saw it. So right. as I was reading through a lot of the tenants, I'm just getting this gut check that it's like, no, that doesn't really describe me. That describes my narcissistic sister that I'm... <laughs> I want to well, read I want to read a, uh, a page out of this book while I got you on the phone here. This is page 75, okay. uh, page 75 out of this book. And uh, like I said, this is... I didn't get a chance to get into what I don't like about this book. And what I don't like is that it blurs the lines with what we now know as narcissism. So um, l- let me give you an, uh, uh, an example of what she qualifies as being codependent. Um, we control in the name of love. We do it because we're only trying to help. We do it because we know best how things should go and how people should behave. We do it because we're right and they're wrong. That's a narcissistic trait. We control right. because... We're afraid not to do it. Again, the whole controlling thing, that's narcissistic, not not codependent. Exactly. Um, we do it to stop the pain. We control because we think we have to. We control because we don't think. We control because controlling is all we can think about. Ultimately, we may control because that's the way we've always done things. And then here's an example of overt narcissism. Tyrannical and dominating. Some rule with an iron hand from a self-appointed throne. They are powerful. They know best. And by God, it will be done this way. They will see to it. That's, that's, see, the, again, she's talking about codependency in her book, but I'm looking at that going, that's overt narcissism, ruling right. tyrannically. And that's how I felt. Yeah. And then here's that's an, how I felt as I was hearing the list. And, and I'm going, yeah. Oh, and and here's, she, here she talks about another type of what she refers to as codependent. Others do their dirty work undercover. They hide behind a costume of sweetness and niceties and secretly go about their business, other people's business. And I'm thinking, that's covert narcissism. So Uh that's one thing I don't... And this is why I I disregard codependency as being a real... as as a thing. I I think that um, what I... What the Royal Wee's position on codependency is, is, is as far as what you and I may understand about ourselves, is that it's misguided empathy. Because we have a desire to help people. We do. Uh We have a desire to solve problems, bring solutions to the table, try to find peace in a situation. But we don't sit here and think about controlling people. You know what I mean? And and, and, and ruling with a tyrannical fist. and, and, And maybe sometimes when narcissistic abuse has gotten so bad and the name calling is so out of control, we might have moments where we're like, I want to give them a piece of my mind. And I want to tell right. them how horrible they're being. But it's it's not in the controlling way in which they're writing about in codependency here. Right. Well, I'm just so excited because I've been struggling. The meeting is actually at the same time that your um, live is on Monday nights. And I'm just like, I don't want to miss the live. <laughs> and so I was so excited when I heard that this is the topic tonight because... um. Yeah, it, it's just been a good confirmation to me that my gut check was correct when I read through the tenants that they were having a recite. And it's like, 
Yeah. No, I don't think this is me. <laughs> so what, thank what, you. What what was it? That. Was it was it a, a lot of stuff of saying uh, I will no longer be angry and forceful and and call people I, names? I can't and... even tell you. I mean, it was like three weeks ago that I last attended one of the live meetings and or the you know Zoom meetings and. I don't know. There were just several things that were about controlling, I think, and that described my sister and Mm -hmm. everything that they were reading. I'm just going, that sounds like her. That sounds like, you know, and not that I'm, I I mean, I have my issues, believe me, and I own up to my issues, which, right. um, Which means, and I'm in counseling. Yeah. And I'm I'm in counseling to get help overcoming my issues, but. Right. Literally, since going no contact with my sister at the end of February, part of what I was struggling with, um, I'm the one a few weeks ago, the night that your dad passed away, happened to be on the live that night, and I said my husband also died of a sudden heart attack, and Mm -hmm. so um, I actually just went through the one-year anniversary of my husband's Mm -hmm. passing this weekend, and... I had wondered if my late husband was a covert narcissist because I came across a video on YouTube in December and didn't even occur to me that my family members were. And so I've been on this hunt to figure out, okay, how did I end up in a relationship with someone so deeply wounded and so, you know, so hurt. And so anyway, I've been wrestling with a lot of that, but, um, in the meantime, in the last year since my husband's death, my sister has screamed at me and hung up the phone on me four times. And the mm-hmm. first three times, I didn't have a clue what narcissism really was, I guess, or covert narcissism. And by the time she did it in February, it kind of confirmed all the things that I was learning about covert narcissism. And I was like, ah, okay. And... I had just been so agitated this whole past year because my family wasn't able to reach out and support me after my husband's death and I couldn't figure it out. And I'm like, what the heck? You know, why are they not calling me? Why are they not checking in on me to see how I'm doing? You know, the rest of, I mean, my fans, my Your uh, so-called family, right. Your so-called family is not there. Yeah. And, you know, my oldest sister lost her husband in 97 and I was there every step of the way with her. Right. The ninth month he was sick and dying of leukemia and the two years after he died, I was there for her and now she can't be bothered with it. She's like, you know, she's, she doesn't have the patience for me taking time to grieve and, you know, she was hurling all these accusations at me in our last Real phone sad. call in February. Real sad. And, Ever since that phone call where I got my confirmation that she was actually a narcissist, it, it's released all the anger, and I'm I'm no longer angry at her. It's like, oh, okay, now I get it. And so it's just been such a release, and I just wanted to say thank you for doing what you do. For I mean, I've watched a ton of your videos on your other channel, and mm. that led me to the Facebook group, and so Good. I'm just thankful for finally getting it (laughs) good and good so thank you there's a lot more to get there's a lot more to get we are just scratching the surface there's a there's a whole lot more okay and and i'm not talking about just you know more talk about no contact and you know and and we're going to be talking about that stuff there's a lot deeper stuff that we're going to be getting into okay so i'm I'm glad you're here and and uh, thank you thank you for calling in Thank you. My name's Cindy. All um, right, Cindy. Um, so thanks again, and you guys have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that she called, and and yeah, the whole issue with the codependency. I want to read one more uh, ch- uh, page out of this book. Not a page, the whole page, but this is on in uh, chapter seven. Uh, again, this is a book on codependency. And uh, this is what she has to say. People uh, say codependents are controllers. We nag, lecture, scream, holler, cry, beg, bribe, coerce, hoover, hoover over, protect, accuse, chase after, run away from, try to talk into, try to talk out of, attempt to induce guilt in, seduce, entrap, check on, 
demonstrate how much we've been hurt, hurt people in return, so they'll know how it feels. I mean, we threaten to hurt ourselves, whip power plays, deliver ultimatums, do things for, refuse to do things for, stomp out, whine, vent fury on, act helpless, suffer in loud silence, try to please, lie, lies, do sneaky things, do sneaky big things, clutch at our hearts and threaten to die, grab our heads and threaten to go crazy, beat on our chest and threaten to kill, enlist the aid support. Anyways, this is what she says is codependency. And I'm looking at this stuff going, that's what I saw in the narcissistically abusive people I dealt with. So the bad part, so the good part of this book is, is helping people to understand detachment. Okay. The bad part of this book is it blurs the lines and makes codependency sound like it's narcissism. Uh, and, and, and there's other things, parts in this book where really, as I read through the list of stuff, it really labeled everything in life. And so I think one of the things that the author, uh, Melody uh, B.E.T., was trying to do with this book, and I could be wrong, but I think she was trying to insinuate that everybody in the world is codependent. I think that's what she... Because there's parts in the book, like what I was just reading to you, you know, stomping on, crying out loud, this and that, laughing, not laughing, crying, not crying. She, she goes on these, these, you know, these runs, label, l- listing every single thing a human being could possibly do and puts that in the category of, if you've experienced this, you're codependent. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't agree with that necessarily. A lot of those are just human characteristics um, and, and reactions and how we react in certain situations. Uh, but then some of the stuff is clearly narcissistic, threaten to die, threaten to kill ourselves, threaten to kill others, threaten to hurt people, threaten to, bu- threaten to be abusive. That's, that's strictly narcissistic stuff. That's not codependent stuff, you know, but, but again, maybe it is codependent stuff, but we just don't resonate with that because we're not codependent. And maybe some of you need to hear that right now. You need to stop with this uh, idea and this thought that you are somehow codependent. If that's what codependent is, and none of that rings true with you, then you're not a codependent individual, and you're not a narcissistic individual. What you are is you are uh, in this place where we all are in this great awakening where we're seeing this stuff unfold in people and the world around us, in families and friends, and we don't know what to do about it, and it's crazy, okay? And that's where we're at. Um, doesn't mean you're codependent. Doesn't mean you're narcissistic. Uh, it means that we've got some some realizations to do, right? Moving forward, we're spiraling upwards, right? And there's a reason we're spiraling upwards, and we're going to get more into that in more videos. So I want to go ahead and answer some of the questions that I saw here um, that are regarding other issues. By the way, one more time, that book is called Codependent No More, uh, Melody Beat 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 Melody Beattie, if you're interested, 1992, again, before the uh, popularization of narcissistic abuse as a term came into play, that was a popular book uh, helping people to heal, okay? Now, uh, Kevin, our narcissist, D says, Kevin, our narcissist using territorial spirits and, uh, or is, is our narcissist using a territorial spirit? Is that why their territory where the abuse is more likely to occur? So that's an interesting question, I believe. Um, do they use territorial spirits? I believe that narcissists are just territorial uh, by nature. And this, when narcissists moves in and they feel like they they belong, that's their territory. This is where they're going to cause their abuse for the most part. Territory can also it doesn't have to be their specific location. This is why it's so important to break away from narcissistically abusive people because what happens is in their mind, if this is a spiritual issue like Dee is asking, is they will start to look at you as their territory. And so that means that wherever you go, either in their house or at your friend's house or at your neighbor's house or your family's house, since you are part of their territory, they will still inflict your abuse and their their abuse onto you, Okay. So I believe it is a territorial thing. Narcissists, uh, narcissists need to be in control. They need to be the ones in charge because they're afraid. They're deathly afraid of having no control. The, 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 the narcissist nightmare, their, their absolute worst fear is to have no control. 
And as you know, in dealing with narcissists is when it gets to that point where you take away control from them, which is what you do when you leave them and you go no contact, you rip the control rug out from under them. And yes, they yell and scream at you as they're falling down on their backside because you ripped the rug out from under their feet and they're falling, cursing you. How dare you take my control away from your life? But what you'll notice is they will eventually stop. They will leave you alone. They will have nothing to do with you. You will be like kryptonite to them. And the reason is because they can't control you. Narcissists, one of the things we don't realize about narcissists is they have to be in control at all times. They cannot afford in their lives to be up against uh, some form of, inst- of, of, of uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Something that they're not expecting, right? Uh, they, they need to be able to predict how they're going to be controlling the situation. If you show them there's an element of unpredictability, meaning you might snap back, you might tell them to leave, you might tell them not to talk to you, you might call the police, you might tell them to, to leave you alone, you might establish a boundary. This sets up a level of unpredictability. They don't know what to expect from you, and so they'd rather just stay away from you. And a lot of you think that this is hurtful, You're hurt by the fact that narcissists are staying away from you. They're not hoovering you anymore. They're moving on. They're they're with other people in life. They're you know what I mean. They're they're they have a new supply, and the reality is is because they have an element of control in that situation, the same in which they initially tried to have in your life, right? Uh, And so that's why they're in relishing in those relationships. They won't dare go back to a place where somebody can possibly say no to them, right? Again, I, and I've witnessed this firsthand. You know, my, my wife's siblings, when we lived in California and we were going over to their houses, they were all up in our business, all up in my business, uh, you know, constantly on Facebook, ridiculing, criticizing me, trying to do what they wanted to do with my son's birthday, this and that. I slowly kept saying, no, no, no. I'd, I'd back them down of their element of control. It slowed down, it slowed down, and when the move finally happened, and then I just, I told some of them off on on, on messaging. I said, listen, don't. I, I said, uh, I'm not going to sit and argue with you. Don't come around my Facebook calling me names, period. I'll, I'll, I'll delete you. I'll block you. And then I followed it up. I did it. I, I made sure I kept true on my promise. My promise is you're going to disrespect me and my family. You're out. And you're not, you're not a part of the family. You're not aunts and uncles to my kids. You're, you're nothing. Right, if you cannot, if you cannot honor other people's boundaries, and the most interesting and amazing thing happened, they stopped coming around. They don't even talk. They, they I, I become like that kryptonite. They, they can't because they know that they're not going to get anywhere. Not only that, but they don't even associate really with, with their own half sister. They don't come around. They don't. They don't comment on her posts. They don't do anything. I've, I've seen the true colors in them. In that, if they don't have an element of control then they can't stand to even be involved. They're scared to. They can't stand to be in a position of no authority in a relationship. They can't just be. Okay. So yes, very territorial, right? Uh, In that way. And again, the whole issue with with my marriage in in that whole territorial thing is they still held on to their half-sister as belonging to them. And this is why the fight against me was so great because I was that... I was the big bad husband trying to create a brand new life, trying to create a new family. How dare me? They can't deal with that, right? Because that takes their territory, what they thought was their territory. You know, my attitude is, yeah, not your territory anymore. Uh, we, we are a new family. Learn to respect that or, or, you know, be gone with yourself, right? You got a problem with new families and marriages, then take it up with, with God because this is, this is a covenant with God and in front of people, and it's also the law. I'm, I'm, we're legally wedded, right? That means that this relationship and this marriage is is far uh, more overriding as far as w- what we do as a family than your relationship as siblings, right? As done. <laughs> the chains with you are, are any chains that ever did exist are cut. They're done. We are a family unit now. And so, yeah, if you're going to attack me, if you're going to call me names, you're going to disrespect me, then you're going to be disrespecting my whole family, basically. And I think that, you know, narcissists, they don't realize that at first, but after a while, they're going to get it and be like, oh man, well, yeah, we screwed that relationship up, you know, and, but 
but that's the way it is. So they are very territorial. They are very territorial. And perhaps it is a territorial spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yes, it is. Uh, one of the things that, you know, the narcissistic abuse that we did endure, that I endured, uh, I discovered that it was a result of, of my part in it. My part in it was continuing to go to them. Because this is one of the things that narcissists become good at doing. It's it's a push pull. They pull you into their lives. No, come on, come on, don't don't be don't be selfish. Come, you need to be a part. You're part of this family. You're you're part. And then when you're there, it's boom, boom, boom. They're hitting you, criticisms, demeaning you, devaluing you, letting you know that you're nothing. And then you don't want to be around them anymore. No, no, no. Come on, don't be selfish. Got it. You got it. Don't be selfish. Be here. And then boom, they're hitting you again, right? And this is what leaves you in this confusing place until you realize, oh my gosh. They're not coming to, to it, around me and my friends and to in my world and doing that. They're they're dragging me into their world and doing that. And I keep going. At some point, you realize, man, I've got to just smarten up and say no, and stop going. And when you stop going again, that's the first step in 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 that's saying no to narcissism, and that's one of the first steps in in pulling the rug out under their from under their feet. Just pull it right out. They have no authority. They have no power. You know, you don't owe them to go to their parties or go to their house or go to their get together. You don't owe them any of that, right? You you go where people respect you and where people appreciate you being there. And if they can't, then you stay away. And and this takes a while to to again, it's not selfish, but it's also not selfless completely. It's just a way of living a life where you are safe and healthy. Does that make sense? All right. What else? Any other questions? I know I was rambling on. Possessive spirit. Absolutely. Any other questions on here? D, thank you so much for your question. Thank you for all your support and your help on there. I appreciate that. Any other questions? What are you all uh, wondering about? Let's see. Sorry for the silence. I'm reading down through a lot of your guys' uh, comments here. A lot of your questions. Possessive. Yeah, we talked about help. I fall from being unable to exercise my narcissistic tendencies and I can't get up. Yeah, basically. That's what goes on. That's what goes on. Yeah, mob mentality of a narc family. I, I definitely experienced that. Yeah. And D, right, D hit the nail on the head. Uh, with the going places you have no business going, being with people you have no business being with. That That is the Royal We motto. Again, that's where the Royal We motto came from. Um, is understanding that narcissistic abuse is just as much, and I'm, it's not victim shaming, but it's just as much of, of y your inability to wake up and see what's taking place in time to get out and to remove yourself, right? It's, it's, it's while you're still hoping and waiting for a good relationship to, to take place, you're still asleep, right? Completely waking up means you realize, oh my gosh, I am with people I have no business being with, doing things I have no business doing, going places I have no business going. I got to get the heck out of here. It's dangerous, right? And so, uh, yeah, I kept going too and saying, yeah, that's what we do. Um, you you have to quit going. You have to be able to say no. That's the first step. And it's painful, especially when you're used to going. How many of you are used to having Christmas Eve at so-and-so's house, Thanksgiving at so-and-so's house, and you, you knew that you were going to be involved with these people? Now we are in this time where you can actually say, no, I'm not going. Have Christmas Eve without me. Have Thanksgiving. Oh, how dare you? How That's fine. How dare me? I'm done. Again, it's not selfish, but it's not selfless. It's the healthy decision in order to maintain peace, right? And sometimes in order to maintain your peace, you have to let them deal with their own issues. Let them spend it without you, right? All right. By Kevin, a cup of coffee. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mike Wilson asks, how do you stop obsessive thinking about them? Uh, this is a good question. 
How do you stop obsessive thinking about narcissists? The the obsessive thinking is a place of being stuck. It's it's a place where you you you've got you you've <laughs> listen. You know that the relationship is unhealthy. You know this, but you so desperately want to make it right. You don't want to, it becomes scarier. The uncertainty of what's ahead is a little bit scary because it, it's scary either way. You either look back at the narcissistic abuse, whether it's family or spouses or exes or friends or, or jobs or wherever that narcissistic abuse was, and you know what's there. It's unhealthy. It's terrible. But you look at a future without that in your life, and that's kind of terrifying too. That's unknown too. So like a caterpillar that goes and builds a cocoon, but is too afraid to turn into a butterfly because it's going to be unknown with wings and it's going to be in the air instead of crawling around on the belly on the ground. And so you're just stuck obsessively thinking and you're stuck in the cocoon. That's what's got you stuck, right? So the pain that you feel, and this is a video that's coming out pretty soon, the pain you feel from narcissistic abuse, this is what it was in my life. I had to realize that the pain is actually my best friend in the situation. The pain is the driving force. The pain is something I need to lean into. I need to embrace. I need to accept it. I'm Kevin, and I am in pain because of narcissistic abuse. It hurt me so bad. It's painful. And that pain, it needs to become a part of me, right? It, it, that needs to be enmeshed with me. Not the, the pain does. I need to accept it and embrace it and allow it to transform and become a part of me because... Our character in life is built... How many of you know that your character, everything you are, is based on on a few things, right? It's your, your DNA and your temperamental disposition, but it's also your experiences in life and your pain, right? You fall down, you get scratched, you get boo-boos, and well, you stop falling that way, right? You stop, you stop uh, racing skateboards at 60 miles per hour down the hill to where you can fall off and scrape, scrape your arm, all the skin off your arm, right? You stop doing that. It's pain that, that stayed with you, that you integrated the pain into yourself so you no longer do that. And this happens as we grow. And, and I think at some point we thought that that would stop, and it doesn't. This is going to happen all the time throughout our life. Now, we try to protect ourselves from that pain. Narcissistic abuse comes, and it's like hitting a brick wall at 60 miles per hour. Boom! And it's, it's that big, that's painful. Ouch. Ouch. And so we're struggling to accept that pain because what that pain is trying to teach us, just like, okay, stop going down the hill on a skateboard at 60 miles per hour. You're going to scrape your arm all up. The narcissistic abuse, the pain of that is saying, okay, stop trying to have that relationship with your parents that you never had because it hurts. It's like hitting a wall going 60 miles per hour. Stop trying to get your ex-spouse to listen to you. Stop trying to get your brother to be like you. Stop. You know what I mean? Stop trying to get this mutual beneficial relationship with these people because it's not going to exist. And so you need to embrace that pain, allow it to transform you. But we, and I did this too, we get caught up. It's stuck in wasting energy. It's not the pain that's got us stuck. It's the energy of us fighting against the pain, saying, no, 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 I maybe I didn't try hard enough. Maybe maybe I just need to submit myself a little bit more. Okay. So I, I hope that kind of stop, helps with the obsessive thinking about them. Uh, I would say that it's better to start thinking more towards the pain. Lean into the pain. Let's let's look at the pain that we're dealing with and allow the pain to help us in life to transform. If we focus on that, at least we're not obsessing and focusing about them. We're focusing and, and obsessing about the pain, and that is what's going to transform us. Okay, that's what's going to transform us. And when you get down to it, the pain is not necessarily just about those people. The pain is about uh, just the, the the realities of the harshness of of humanity of of the the reality that we've been lied to about a lot of things. You know, family means nothing. Love starts to mean nothing. A lot of things are unraveling for us and it's a lot. And narcissistic abuse really really hits on that, right? So there's a lot. Jamie says you rambled on well tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what else we got here. Um Buy me a cup of coffee. Please, buy me a cup of coffee. Love that. 
how to really differentiate. The Royal We motto is right. Just because they come out same uh, womb doesn't mean they're good for you. That's that's true. Listen, blood it does not mean it, it, your family. It doesn't. It means you share biological parents, but that does not make you family at all, right? Um, it is hard to walk away from toxic relationship when they're called family. It's the hardest. But anybody that abuses you uses you with neglect and abandonment. It's unhealthy. D is absolutely right. D is absolutely right. And what we have to wake up, wake up to, for those of you who have unhealthy relationships with your family, keep in mind that you know when you think that, well, family's supposed to be there. Family's supposed to be different. Listen, there are many people and kids who have no dads because they left. They walked out. They abandoned the family, literally, physically. There's moms who have abandoned the family, literally, physically. There are parents who have... Uh, conspired to do horrible, tragic things to get rid of their kids. We see it on the news. We probably don't see uh, the, the, we don't see an, uh, enough of it, meaning it happens more than we even know. And so what this tells you is one, thank God you're alive, but two, let it sink in that in this harsh, cruel world that Blood and family does not necessarily mean what you think it does. And and this was given to us again, and I use this as a reference many times, but you can go back to the story of the first ancient story of the first two humans born on earth, Cain and Abel. What happened in that story? They're brothers, they're family, they're blood, man, they're biological. One raised his hand and killed the other out of a fit of jealousy. So what does this tell you about this idea of family? It tells us that in this protected bubble of a, of a nation, westernized world, whatever that we you want to call it that we live in, it's been promoted heavily that this whole family idea, blood idea is thicker than water. Really, it's not. It's not. When it comes down to it, uh, families can be just as dog-eat-dog dog mentality as, as strangers. Sometimes worse because it's sneakier and it can be a lot of backstabbing, right? And so this is some of the painful stuff that we, we are thinking about. That this is becoming the butterfly, but we don't know because it's uncertain. Kevin, I don't know if I want to fly into that stuff yet. I don't know if I want to fly and start to think about that stuff. I, I, I liked being a caterpillar crawling on the ground and, and living in a world where family loved you and Christmas and the Christmas trees and, and Christmas dinners and Thanksgivings and and Mother's Days and Father's Days and cards and campfires and bleh. And I get it. I was raised like that too. And, and one of the things that I thought was interesting is that uh, with all that stuff I was raised with, what was hidden from me while we were busy doing all the Christmas Eve extravaganzas and, and Thanksgiving extravaganzas at Grandma and Grandpa's house, I did. I, I, I did have that. But what was largely ignored was the real issues of abuse and weird things happening in the family. It was very, it was protected and shrouded in secrecy. And yes, I, I know now that there was a lot of weird stuff in my family that was protected and shrouded in secrecy, right? And so what's happening now in, in this awakening is that we're awakening to this going, this is weird and there's a lot of stuff shrouded in secret and it can't be shrouded in secrecy anymore. And we don't we don't want to keep it secret. Oh, I'm dumb, man. If I see abuse from parents, grandparents, brothers, I'm calling it out. And again, there's a reason we're doing this. And there's a reason this awakening is happening. And I'm not gonna give the whole thing away, but I'm gonna be putting out a video pretty soon talking about that. This is Kevin. I released the butterflies this week. Golf. Golf fritillaries. Beautiful. Beautiful. Everybody told me blood is thicker than water. I never understood what that meant. It means nothing. Blood is not thicker than anything. You know, bio, you know, biological. How many, how many of you know biological parents can be nothing but biological donors? Have you heard that? Biological donors. I think there was a rap song about that. Phil was my father because my biological didn't bother, right? So some people got that early on. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the people who, uh, there's a lot of, of people uh, uh, who've done great things in life who've understood this early on in life. 
that their dads weren't what they're were supposed to be. They didn't have dads. They didn't have moms, right? Eyes are open. Kevin, the s'mores, the campfires, the terrible relationships were tolerable as long as there was chocolate s'mores. Basically, basically, that, that's what happens, D, right? Uh, and that was the lie of, of Christmas Eves and Thanksgiving and campfires and trips and vacations and stuff is that as long as that stuff was there, then the abuse was tolerable, right? Don't say anything about the abuse because by golly, we're going to, we're going to have a great, we're looking forward to Christmas Eve, right? Don't say anything about what's really going on because uh, we're going to have a great uh, four week trip to Florida as a family, spend lots of money. And don't get me wrong, because those trips were great and fun, but the cost was that uh, we were hidden. Uh, we, we, were, we were sheltered from a lot of the truth and a lot of the abuse that was taking place. Yeah. So I hope that this all makes sense to you. We talked about a lot tonight. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the show up. I want to thank you all for being here live on the Royal We tonight. We did talk about a lot, and uh, it, got, it got pretty deep. And, um, but I do want to thank you all for being here. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to, just for Tanya and for D, I'm going to put some music on here. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Be on the lookout for videos, uh, coming up. I've got some pretty, uh, so, uh we've got some videos coming out for y'all on the Organic Royal Wheat channel. And if you are so obliged, then, uh, absolutely follow what D said. You can, uh, you're welcome to donate to the Royal Wee through PayPal, you can find PayPal on the Organic Royal We uh, channel. There's a PayPal link there. You can also become a regular donator through Patreon. And that's what supports this and keeps this going. And so thank you to those of you who are supporting this. Not a whole lot on Patreon right now, but uh, but it's there. It's It makes it easy to uh, be, a, be a Patreon of, of the Royal We. Uh, with that... We will be back with more videos on the Organic Royal Wheat channel, so be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification and make sure you're there. And with that, I hope to see you all back next Monday night. Get ready to make your phone calls, ask your questions, and uh, everybody have a good night and a great week. Uh, I know a lot of craziness is going on, and I encourage you to uh, join in on the uh, Royal Wheat, the official Royal Wheat Facebook support group page. They can help you out. Uh, you're also welcome to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me. If you need that one-on-one -on -one time, visit www.jointheroyalwe.com. We can FaceTime one another uh, when you schedule an appointment, or we can just do a phone, one-on-one -on -one phone time uh, through a scheduled appointment. So I encourage you to do that as well. All right. I won't quit. Bum, 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 bum. I'm just getting warmed up. You haven't seen nothing yet. I won't stop now. Man, I gotta. I used to have a better voice. <laughs> you can tell in this song. The roof down. I promise you haven't seen nothing yet. Come on. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>